we enter the land of dawn, we might see an interesting battle spell come out from Fobius. I was expecting a vengeance. Oh, because usually you need to go for that vengeance if you are up against a one on the Fobius in a losing lane like this. Hmm. But it is not the Benedetta that he's up against, right? It is the Yu Zong. Exactly. Well, Yu Zong is also a very oppressive hero in the laning phase. So we we'll have to see that can Papa Dog actually get an advantage? And if he does have an advantage, right? It's still, uh, it's still up to the rest of the team to enable, to try and catch out the players before the, the Fovius in the hands of Papa Dog can actually make those crazy plays. So far though, it is a slow laning phase and it will all depend on, I think, the jungler. So far we've seen that both these teams like taking it easy all the way to number four, but in this game, it's a bit more scrapping going on. Let's see, right now, Indonesia early on, already one one actually winning out in the lane up against Clint right now, and he's Brad is actually able to get out. Wait, in the XP lane, it's a soul. No, it's a gank. It's a gank. There, two v one. Erwin taken very low. That's the inspire popped in. Brands looking for that kill onto Erwin will not be able to find it, but it's a lot of damage, and that pressure has been alleviated off the other members. Dreams gets caught. That's going to be the shadow kill to pick up Woo! another. One for one. This time, Argentina with their comfort picks are doing better. Argentina strikes back in the early game. Again, you can't take this team lightly. They are a serious contender in the tournament right now. Indonesia, they need to be a bit more careful because if they let Yutun start snowballing, that can't be good for them as well. These uh, squishier laners are going to be quite vulnerable, but I guess Brands will be the one that will be feeling the bulk of that aggression. Indonesia though already first on to the neutral objective now. Picks it up. No contest from Argentina as Jotun doesn't have that purple buff. Without the purple buff, Hayabusa is going to find it very difficult to contest or even to gank. So for Argentina, it does feel like their win condition is solely on getting the picks early on. They can't really go for the neutral objective control. Dreams there with a cheeky invade looking for that steal. But Taz on this Demon Slayer Benedetta. I wonder if he's gonna go damage or tank. I think damage must be the way to go. He has that Demon Slayer emblem, so it's a interesting hero. Able to be built quite a few different ways, hybrid, tank, full damage. But right now, we keep talking about the lane management in game number one. In game number two here, I think it's no different. Indonesia has so many wave clear tools to actually work around with. Psychots, Taz, as well as Hijime can all do that, but look at that aggression coming in, and they're done yet. Jotun able to maneuver himself out of that position, but now he's gonna get caught in the stun. Doesn't have the shadow kill to play with here. The guy oh! as well, but a Dumanau blast forces Erwin to pop that circling eagle, leaving Jotun behind for Indonesia to take. Erwin trying to dish out damage back, but again, it's Indonesia that it really feels like Indonesia has Argentina's number in the rotation game. You can see how they can just have such a good read on Argentina because Dreams, he charged the Numenon Blast preemptively towards the top side. So they are a few steps ahead in these very messy skirmish engagements. And I think Taz is waiting. He's trying to try and steal that purple buff. Does he have backup though? That's the main question. He's all alone here. He's still looking for that retribution battle, but decides to back off. Using eye for an eye to get out of the Ooh. circling eagle. Meanwhile, in the XP lane, Hijaman Psychots finds a kill. That's the second kill over to Papa Dog, who's not having a blast on the Sphobius in that XP lane, Arashi. We mentioned it up against the Yuzong. It's gonna be really difficult to lane, especially with the ganks that's constantly just being placed by Indonesia. Not only are they having a Fovius fall behind, they're having side cuts on the Yuzong, just absolutely wrecking it in that EXP lane. That can't be good as the Indonesians are pushing the aggression. And look at that. Real world manipulation popped in. Jotun looking for an opening as Hijumi jumps back Ooh. to the black shoes, but it's gonna be caught by Jotun, who was very patiently waiting. I'm gonna blast onto Siv and on towards Erwin as Dash across, but with Tang opened up. Ooh. Erwin taken low. Still able to survive, but with Siv down, this means that not only is Indonesia winning in the XP lane, this this one one on the hands of Brands as well is ahead, which is not a good sign. Absolute disaster as far as the laning phase is concerned. And look at the babysit coming in, but on the other side of the map, that is Taz. I mean, Taikos just making a very aggressive play 
It almost pays out in a kill, unfortunately, not just yet. They're just pushing the tempo again and again. And Argentina, which lane are they supposed to make play, uh, make plays in? Because at every moment, they're getting out-rotated, and Indonesia is just in the bushes waiting for them to walk in unsuspectingly. It's absolutely insane right now. Five to two. Bataz jumps in Whoa. all alone there. Looking for the purple buff, finds it and gets out. No punishment. It's actually going to be Indonesia who looks for the collapse under the tier two. Real world inflation popped in, but Psychos jumps to the furious dive now. In the midst of it all, Erwin to be taken low, but Dreams is still alive with the help of Taz who jumps in with the final blow. Looking for another kill right now as he jumps out and he buys enough time for Brands to pick up that top side tier one. They didn't lose a single member in that dive. If you thought Argentina completely out macroed Slovenia yesterday, this is a bit of a repeat because Indonesia is absolutely steps leagues ahead from Argentina. Unfortunately, Dreams was not taken out and due to him being so low, it baits the rest of the members of Argentina and Indonesia were able to punish that. And while all that is happening, the fight began without Brands and doing that, Brands just didn't stay still. Goes for objectives, goes for more farm. And we talked about the 1-1 having a good lane. France is having an amazing lane. And in the late game, that cannot be good for the side of Argentina. Sixth minute, four-man dive. 4v5, Arashi. That's what made it super impressive. It wasn't a 5v5. It was a 4v5. And they still got out with the better trade. They still were able to take that purple buff unpunished. They were the ones actually punishing Argentina for stepping into their own jungle. They are treading the line so carefully. I mean, at any moment, any small misplay can lead to disaster in this very risky place, but Indonesia is making it happen. That just shows, again, their skill and their class, and right now they are in the sides, in the wings, waiting for an opportunity. Side cuts always being so crafty in the positioning game, but look at that. Jotun has the Quan Shadow, gets out, but it's going to be chunked by Hijume, who follows him under the turret with the Black Shoes, gets out. Real World Inflation popped in, but that's going to be Tatu, who targets him down with the final blow. Forcing the Flicker out, Dreams taken down in the back lines by Papa Dog as he jumps over the body. Force Hijume falls as well. Indonesia too over aggressive, finally punished here by Argentina, but Brands is looking for the crossbow tank. Pops in in the end against Papa Dog, who gets the safety with the Guiding Wind. Taz. Still looking for a Psychos with the Black Dragon for him now. Still looking, going for this fight. It's a 3v5, but Indonesia still are able to push Argentina back. But it does not change the fact that Argentina were able to find another two kills. They get another two kills, but we talk about the wave pressure again and again. You guys at home are probably so bored of hearing about it, but the bottom side, the minions have taken one more turret for Indonesia. We take a look at the items here, four brands, Corrosion Scythe having the Demon Hunter Sword as well. These thicker, tankier members on the side of Argentina are going to be suffering from that percentage H uh, HP damage from the Demon Hunter Sword, and it's only going to get worse from here on. That is two core items for 1-1. One, one. That's really not what Argentina won. The reverse. 1-1 one, one with the Demo uh, Demon Hunter Sword with the Corrosion Scythe so early on. And now I do believe he is building towards the Wind Talker. Which is going to be, a again, that countermeasure for Brands to go up against the Phobius. When you start to have more attack speed and when you start to be able to actually dash faster than the Demonic Force, that's when Wan Wan can actually somewhat counter the Phobius. Taz is all alone, and he actually baits the entire team, baits some resources as well for Psychots. Oh. Goes over the Black Dragon form, petrifying Jotun. And just like that, that's the jungler taken out. That's also Meteoro who falls in the mid lane to Brands. Papa Dog isolated, zoned away from the rest of his team as he'll be stunned up and he will be slain up in the top side. Look at Brands. Three for zero. Brands pushing in the mid lane without a care. He is alone. He is staring two members of Argentina in the face. He doesn't. It doesn't matter. He is so ahead right now. He has that confidence, the mechanical skill, and look at that. He's behind the turret. That is. You're not supposed to do that as a marksman, but Brent doesn't care, I guess. As Indonesia wrestles away the control in the jungle from Argentina, but look at that right now. They're just sieging the base as much as possible, and the base turret passive has popped. I can speak based on experience that 
on the 1-1, one -one, if you're Snowball, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll see once again. Psychot wants to do whatever he wants as well with the Black Dragon form. Just penetrating into that base, zoning four members away from the base turret. And Franz and Hijume just sieges it down. Taz now a little oh. late as the Numenon Blast cancelled out, but he flickers forward, getting the damage and the stun onto Meteoro, who's forced to flicker back out again. Taz now under the turret range, forced to back away. Shadow Kill popped in, won't be able to find enough damage to take anyone down. That's another resource, the real world manipulation by Meteoro to defend. 10 minutes in, Indonesia have cracked one base turret and are looking for the second in the mid lane. Arashi, it's looking brim. It's gonna be Hijume who jumps back with Black Shoes. Demonic Force popped in by Papa Dog. And they do not want to stop. They just have the superior siege right now. They're going for damage on the members of Argentina and also the base turrets, but they're going again. Papa Dog looking for the play, but it is just going to give Brands enough weakness points to pop that crossbow of Tang. Erwin low, forced to recall, and Indonesia are looking for the N2-0. Oh! Cyclops <laughs> jumps in again with that signature Petrify on three. Finds a double before they end the game. 2-0. Indonesia will meet up against Cambodia in the upper bracket finals. What a performance, man. And multiple members from Indonesia, they have their signature heroes. And I think teams need to start taking notice. It is just so dangerous. We saw Taz with the Fanny in game number one. In game number two, we see Psychots on that Yuzong. Complete destruction, man. You cannot allow these players to, ha to get those picks. It's just, again, <sighs> Indonesia this time, right? In the first game, the Fanny was left open. Uh, Kaja as well for Dreams. But this time, it was the 1-1. One -one. And obviously, that Yuzong. So they traded two for two. In the end, that's the thing. If you go for the red side, you will need to ban out technically more heroes because of the threat of the first pick, right? The mm. joy. These crazy heroes that are first pick prio favors the blue side currently. As so far, we have seen the blue side find a bit more success than the red in terms of the win rate. And you can see it here as well with joy finally now uh, available to actually pick. It's an auto ban. You need to get it out. If you don't, we saw what happened. We s we indeed saw what happened. I w I'm still in disbelief. I still don't think that makes any sense. But you know, who am I?